Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're looking at another Godot add-on. This one is the Godot Dialog Manager. Uh, it's an open source project. It's very similar to something we talked about in the past, which was uh, Dialogic. The thing is, this is more uh, low level and simple, less tooling, more code. So if you want to have things a little bit more customizable or you want to handle things in code, you'd want to go with Dialog Manager. Otherwise, you've got Dialogic, which is more of a top level tool for handling all kinds of dialogue system. So exactly are we talking but here, well, if you want to have branching conversations in your game, that is what this add-on is all about. It's under the MIT license. Uh, it is from Nathaniel Hode, uh, assuming I said that right. And uh, let's just jump in and take a look at it in action. So I've set up this very simple example using graphics from... Um, uh, but, but zero wing uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and we will play this that I've set up then I'll show you how I went ahead and created it so you can see here uh, we've got normal dialogue prompt it's using the uh, UI accept and UI cancel I think keys for the defaults you can configure all that yourself by the way so I hit space we flip between the navigation and this one is actually controlled by a variable so this is what this guy is all about basically for doing branching dialogue setups uh, and once you've got it installed, which by the way is very simple, basically just clone the repository down, grab the add-ons folder, and dump that into your project of choice. And then you should be able to find it in your project. So we head back over here, projects, project settings, and you will see dialog manager right there. And yeah, all right, so uh, that is in. Let's go take a look at how this works. So once it was installed, you'll see here we get this new dialogue settings, and here is the dialogue. First off, we have up here, uh, this is kind of the name of it. We're gonna use that in our code to find this actual dialogue itself, and then we're basically just gonna run through all the code. So you've got the first person is cat, second person is captain, and then we have a conditional here. So if main screen is on equals true, then we're gonna show that dialogue. You've got all kinds of branching stuff. We'll see that in the uh, documentation in just a second. But this is how the dialogues are set up. By the way, you can um, actually test your dialogue as you write it right here. So uh, I could go ahead and uh, play the test right here. You don't need to have any code hooked up. So you can see that your, um, your dialogues are branching. Uh, you can do prompts for uh, entering input and so on so you can have it so that it actually uh, asks you for something and then heads back now there's no actual state in the way that the conversations happen so you've got to track that yourself the way i've done that is basically over here you go project settings you're going to see i've got a singleton uh auto loaded called game states a very simple simple file uh, so you can see game states is right here and it literally just has that one property defined so this is an auto load. You'll notice it when I went into the uh, project settings, auto load, it's right there. So this is where you could put a variety of variables uh, that you can then hook up into your code on the other end. So if someone says something stupid in dialogue, you could say is player stupid equals true. Or if they did something that causes them to take damage, you could have it automatically take damage and so on. You can also call out like animation cues and so on. So that like, you know, while you're playing through this dialogue that we showed in action, like so, we could call animate, which would cause us to actually read the dialogue aloud or, you know, cause the mouth to go up and down or however you want to handle things. So you've got uh, the ability to actually call out to code as well directly from your dialogue management. In terms of that guy right there that we were looking at earlier on, just go here to the settings and you're going to notice there's a runtime settings and you can set your game states here. You can have multiple uh, versions. You can also have methods that dialogues call. Uh, so if there was code that you needed to call directly from Dialogue Manager, you could set that up in the singletons as well and call it directly from uh, your script right here. You'll notice you're getting syntax highlighting as you are setting up the dialogues. Other than that, it is pretty straightforward. So let's go take a look at our scene. Our scene is really simple. It's a node with two characters in it. One of these characters has a script attached, and you're going to see uh, how we set up the Dialogue Manager. So basically... Um, we have the all your base tr uh, resource. Uh, this resource here is ultimately what was created here. So you can see here, this is all your base that is being created down there. So all your base trez, this is what this guy is right here. Um, so in the script, we load that in for, so we have access to our dialogue details. And then we've created a function called speak and say, uh, and we pass in the name of the, um, the dialogue and then the resource to use. Now again, the name was defined up here so you could have multiple different dialogues within a single file if you want to call or access the code for a different one uh, you would just pass it in for the speak and say you'd say the um, you know 
uh, talk about the weather or whatever the heck you want to have your dialogue tree there, you could do it right here. And then here, our function is pretty straightforward. Basically, um, we read the next line out until it's completed. Uh, we display it in a balloon using the example balloon. You can customize and create your own balloons. Uh, the balloon, of course, being the, um, the visual display uh, down here, this guy right there. Um, you can uh, basically, your easiest bet is to go into, so it's part of the add-ons, example balloon folder right here. You're going to see all the things that go together to create that guy. Basically, just clone example balloon down to your own directory and create your own versions of it if you want to, you know, dial, change the way they work, change the way they're positioned, and so on. Um, so that's where you're getting your visual customization right there. Uh, we create an instance of our dial of our balloon. Uh, we apply the dialogue to the balloon itself. Uh, we add it to the scene, and then we call this again so that we keep going through all the various different lines of dialogue until we've run out of them. Um, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the code involved in setting up conversation. Pretty straightforward on the whole. All the tools you need to create the branching dialogue are in there. So here we are back to the uh, GitHub page. You're going to notice here it's under the MIT license, which is quite nice. Uh, it was very recently, just recently published at large. I think it was basically three days ago um, that it went public. Uh, there is a tutorial video that walks you through uh, how to do things in a bit more detail. The key thing you're going to probably want to do is come to this documentation and read about writing the dialogue. Now, I've only skimmed over what you can actually do in writing the, the dialogue for stuff. Again, you use the um, utility character to define the name of the node tree within the dialogue. Uh, you, the dialogue is basically... Um, it, this in front means it was said by somebody. This is just a general statement. Go on down. You can have uh, branching responses. Uh, that they can choose from their um, their list, and then you can have it uh, display different things out. Uh, to branch, you can indent to another title if you wish, so if you want to organize things nicely, so you can jump off to you know uh, a title like defined um, here, like so. Uh, you can jump off to that using um, the arrow operator, like so. So you can keep it branching. If you have complicated dialogue, you can organize it nicely. Uh, as we saw in my example, there are conditionals, if else, based off of variables. You can define your own game states that the variables are in. You have the dialogue branch based off how those variables are defined. Uh, then we've got the ability to do uh, mutations. So uh, modify state with a set or do line. Uh, any variable or functions must be properly uh, must be a property or method of one of your provided game states. So as we saw earlier on, um, the game state is this guy right here that I defined. Again, it's just a simple singleton auto load. Uh, so you can put methods in here, you can put variables in here, but it has to be defined in there. But then you can go ahead and just straight out call them if you wish. So um, if you wanna call an animate function, you can call it directly there. Then it can do whatever kind of good Godot code you want on the other end. Uh, you've got error checking in advance. You can, again, run the scene directly. Uh, it responds to these def definitions by default. So the UI up, UI down, and UI accept. Um, and you can export uh, CSV translation. So if you're doing it in multiple different languages, it supports that as well. Uh, we've got a bit of a detail over here on how you can actually use it in your game. Basically, it's the same code I did. As you can see, you can do uh, much more advanced dialogues in place. You can actually have uh, branching conversations and so on. Uh, and you can also, again, handle uh, multiple different translations and languages via CSV files. And then there is, uh, again, that video they just published up uh, for how to go ahead and use this guy if you want to get into a bit more depth than what I provided today. And again, if you want to have a bit more tooling and a bit less code, uh, and you're willing to go with something a little bit more complicated, Dialogic is sort of the same thing. Uh, same purpose to create dialogue systems. Uh, this is just, I would say, uh, more advanced, more tooling, uh, and, and probably I would say on the whole, uh, more complicated, uh, but also probably more powerful. And that one's from Emilio, and that one is also MIT licensed. So it's nice to have options in this area. This is really useful for people doing RPG, JRPG, visual novels, those kind of games. Um, and the approach of having it be stateless, you provide your own with this one, it, it really is going to kind of fit your code better. You don't really have to adapt to the tool. You basically just create this bridge layer between your dialogue system and the state and the variables and the methods that are being called, and you hook it up that way. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Godot Dialogue Manager. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.